Hi, I'm Ray and welcome to the Handyman's Haven. In this project we're going to install a dash cam in my pickup truck. And uh, this is made by uh, Thinkware and it is a high definition camera. And the one bonus with this setup is it also comes with a reverse camera. In other words, there's a camera goes in the back of the truck under my canopy and hardwires and connects to the camera on the dashboard and they both show up in a split screen on the little screen on the dash cam. Now I was going to buy a dash cam for my truck because I sold with the vehicle I just sold I let the camera go with it so I'm trying a different one and I was also going to put in a backup camera and in a pickup that's very important because most of the area that is below your tailgate or hidden by parts of your canopy or if your truck is loaded you can't see what's behind you and I found in my previous pickup truck my backup camera worked absolutely fantastic it gave me confidence backing up without any chance of hitting anybody or banging into someone else's vehicle now the thing that I like about this particular camera is that both the dash cam and the rear backup camera show up on one screen. And I was going to buy a separate backup camera, but the problem with that is now I have to mount another screen somewhere in the truck. And if you see some of the videos of my old truck, uh, where I installed cameras, I had one, two, three, four, five cameras in that truck, if you can believe it. I had a camera in my grill, so I could see when I pull up to a post in a parking lot or something, I could see right up to the post and know exactly where I am without hitting the post. Above that in the windshield, I had a dash cam uh, and also a backup camera hardwired into my above my license plate. Then I also had a camera on the side of my pickup truck on the side of the canopy looking down your blind side if you're backing up a trailer you can't see anything on that side and I had one shooting down the blind side of my trailer if I was in the bush and I could back up and see if there was any obstructions there. Now that was a bit overkill, kill. a good, tremendous amount of wiring and setup so I can turn each camera on individually. So I'm keeping it simple with this one. I'm just going with a backup camera and a dash cam. Now let me just say that uh, Thinkware, I'm not familiar with this company, it's a Korean company. Um, they're one of the best, I've looked them up on the internet, and uh, they're one of the best or top rated cameras as far as quality goes and reliability so I'm hoping to get good things out of this it's called Thinkware and uh, Thinkware did not provide me with this camera I purchased this camera for myself I purchased it from a uh, electronics store here where I live and I paid three hundred dollars for this camera plus tax that's three hundred dollars Canadian so it's not cheap so I'm looking for good things for this camera so let's we'll go to the work table here and we'll unbox it and just see what comes in the box with this camera. There's one thing I just realized I should clarify in the, just the previous clip there I mentioned I had five cameras uh, the one in the in the grill the front grill the one uh, dash cam up by my truck's mirror the uh, license plate backup camera and the right uh, passenger side uh, on the back of the box showing my blind side when I'm backing up and the fifth camera I mentioned five was a camera mounted on my dashboard my video camera and that was set there so that I could take pictures uh, while we were uh, rolling down the road this is in the bush I live in British Columbia often in the bush taking pictures of wildlife and that was the uh, grab-and-go camera so to speak we uh, when we're out in the bush uh, we sometimes catch animals crossing the road or they cross the road and they run into the bush and try and hide on you whatever so we'd grab that camera that's my kind of my grab-and-go camera 
the video camera and take that and get my pictures. Anyway, I will put a uh, link somewhere in this video uh, to my older truck showing you all the uh, camera installations that I had at that time, if you're interested. It's just a, it's a thing of interest. It was overkill with five cameras, obviously, but I'm a tech guy. I love that stuff. Okay, so let's get on. We're going to take the stuff out of the box and see what we've got here on our new uh, backup camera and uh, dash cam. Well, this is probably one of the most uninteresting parts of any video that I ever watch or I'm going to do, and that's taking the stuff out of the box. Um, I've had it out of the box just quickly, briefly, but we'll show you what we've got in here. There's the uh, service information, a little manual here, which does not give you an awful lot. It's only a, a few pages, but it's pretty well self-explanatory. And here we have the uh, cable, which is the small USB connectors, both ends. Now that's just going to join the back up camera to the, this has to be hardwired from the backup camera in the canopy of my truck all the way to the little dash cam which is going to be up near my truck mirror. Um, this is the backup camera and it has a peel and stick base and uh, you kind of have to plug this into the camera plugs in right here you have to plug this into the camera once it's operational before you stick this on because you have to determine whether it's this is right side up or this is right side up and it's once it's hooked onto the uh, glass and my canopy uh, you can adjust this for for the view that's pretty straightforward Man, this is a pet peeve of mine, probably everybody else's too. The way they package stuff is ridiculous. Why did they need this piece of cardboard? It's, it's just inside, and this has to be, you know, it's a lid. It doesn't need that part. You could probably eliminate 50% of the cardboard that's in this box. Just a pet peeve of mine, maybe yours as well. Okay. So, it comes with a, this is a very interesting little device here. I just noticed this. And I guess it's kind of redundant if you combine this with the uh, mini flash drive here. You, all, you have this flash drive carrier uh, that you can slip into your computer or into a, a device that will read this. And they also give you this, this is really cute, a little USB stick. I want to can't even get the thing off. A USB stick. And in the end of that... There's a little slot that you can put the little tiny flash drive. So that's that's kind of handy, cute. You could probably use that for other applications as well. So they do give you a 32 gig flash drive, and that's really kind of handy. That's that's worth a few bucks. So I'm pleased with that. So there's a, and that plugs into the main camera. Yeah. Shows you here. So, pretty straightforward. And here's your cable here for plugging into your cigarette lighter for power this end going into the camera itself Oop. and there's the little camera two channel so you're recording not only your dash cam video but your backup video as well if you happen you can use the camera obviously as a backup camera when it's showing on the screen, it shows a little split screen here. And the nice thing is if you have a rear ender, which in most cases people only have dash cams, so if you get hit from behind, 
Uh, it's one way of proving whether you were moving or not and whose fault it was. And uh, very good. So you've got two channels that are recording all the time. I really like that. And it comes with a bunch of assorted little stick-on clips to hold your cable in place as you're running it. Uh, a little stick-on base. Let's open that up and see what that is. Must apologize for this ugly bandage on my hand here. Can't believe it. I'm going to make a video on it to warn people, but I actually injured myself quite badly washing my car. And uh, I'm going to put a video out and caution people. I feel uh, very bad about doing this because it should not have happened to me. I thought I was smarter than that, but I'll just show you in another video how bad it was. So here's your clip. It has a little slotted base here. Slides onto the camera. And then you can obviously mount that. Maybe this is your windshield. Mount that and your windshield. Actually, the windshield would be going this way, sorry. And uh, adjust that. The only thing I don't see here, there's no horizontal adjustment. If you don't get this right first time, pointing to the front of your vehicle, if it's a little off kilter, there's no way of adjusting it. So, yeah, that's, that's my only first fault I found with this particular camera. And some more, well, I guess this is your, if you can't, if you have to tear this off because you got the thing stupid, they give you another one here. But it seems to me if they had had a little swivel on this, it would have been a lot simpler. Anyway, that's all the stuff. It looks pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm impressed with the way it looks. Yeah, here's your plugins for your cables. The front power cable up in here and the back cable plugs in with this the mini USB so pretty nice I think it's a two not sure on the screen here all right 2.7 so it's it's close to a three inch screen on it from here to here so that's a pretty good size screen and adequately enough to show the backup portion. That's the only thing you really want to see. I could care less what it's recording going forward because I can see what's happening. I'm right there. So you can change that on your settings. You can have the uh, front camera be being the large picture in picture, which it won't be. It'll be the small one. And then the backup camera will be the, the larger picture. So you can do that in your settings. So the next step is to take all this stuff out and start putting it together in the truck. It'll be interesting how I'm going to get the wire all the way from the back window in my canopy to the dash cam, which is going to be up near my mirror in the truck. Okay, next step out in the uh, driveway and see how this all goes together. Well, I worked for two hours yesterday, approximately. Uh, installing the backup camera and the uh, forward-facing dash cam and uh, I'll go through the installation for you there's the dash cam up there and of course the backup camera now, this was the most difficult part of the installation from the standpoint that I had to run the wires along the roof of the canopy and then there's a, just the slightest amount of space at the canopy window and in the truck sliding window, if you've got both on your vehicle, and that allowed me to run the wires without having to drill any holes. And uh, that made it really quite simple installation. And then when we got inside, I'll show you quickly inside here. 
you can see where I've come across and out here with my wire and the wire is just simply tucked up underneath now I didn't show you me doing all this because it's pretty hard to hold a camera and install the wiring so I've just come along hidden it tucked it up in here up and over the, the plastic and inside the weather stripping you just pull the weather stripping down like so I know it's really difficult to see and slide it along and I just continued on over top between the headliner and the plastic here right along here and then came along the rubber you can see the wire in there or not it's right there came along the headliner came across and then tucked it up underneath this liner and you can see the wire coming out and down into the camera so that was the connection for the backup I'm gonna pause it here for a minute got the garbage truck here banging away there we go garbage trucks gone never fails seems every time I shoot an outside video as soon as I start narrating, the neighbors start up their lawnmower or their hedge trimmer. But anyway, here we are. So the camera's mounted, and we have our uh, backup camera plugged in here. And then this, I'm sorry, this is our backup camera here. And this is our main camera, which power, which provides power to the camera here, as well as the camera going at the back. So, we ran these wires along and down in through the, the post. Now, one little hint, when I got here, I had a considerable amount, well, maybe two feet of wire extra, and the same when I ran uh, the other wire here. So this cavity here, or where the handhold is for the getting in and out of the truck, is a good size pocketed here, so I just tucked all the extra wire down inside there and uh, that worked very well. Now we have this power plug, our lighter plug. I didn't elect to wire it directly into my fuse panel because this gives me control over what the camera actually does rather than have the camera plugged in all the time and work just with the ignition. So this particular lighter plug is uh, on ignition so if I leave it pushed in and the truck comes on the camera automatically starts and stops with the truck ignition but sometimes I would like to have the camera on where I'm parked and so I've uh, in case for security reasons if I'm in a parking lot or wherever um, so I have another plug-in down down here just below the ashtray and that one's live all the time so that gives me the option of being able to plug it in down here, like so, and leave it out until I need it. So if I want, if I'm driving, I just simply push it in, or if I want to leave it on in a parking lot that I'm located in, for security reasons, I can just leave it plugged in. It uses so little power that I'm not worried about. I've got dual batteries in the truck. It would take me days and days and days to even. A hint of doing any damage to the batteries. You just heard my camera starting up because I plugged it in. So let's take a look at it here before we do some adjustments. Okay, camera taking picture of a camera. So as you can see, that's my storage shed right there. And the camera's GPS facing forward. Connected. And in the upper corner here is the backup camera. So the thing that I like about this, it has a switchable picture-in-picture. -picture. 
I don't really care to see what's on my screen going forward because I'm looking that way right now. But backwards, when it's on all the time, you can do a little camera switch right here. You switch this. Okay, now it's changed and put my storage shed up in the little box, picture in picture, and now here's my backup camera. This is my wife's wheelchair ramp. I have it folded down so I can get access to the back of my box to do some work. So you can see it works pretty good. And it's looking across the street here or down the ways. That's my uh, the grandkids' uh, basketball hoop. And anybody walking in this area at all is now covered. So and this was a problem I had in parking lots. I could not see who was behind me. And that's very important in a pickup truck because there's so many blind spots. And people, I mean, it's unbelievable. People, they see your backup lights on, you're even moving, and they still walk behind you. It's like, do you do that when the train's coming too? I mean, what's the matter with people? This is why I need a backup camera. Uh, I'm in reverse. My backup lights are on. Uh, people have walked by. I have saw them clear. But this guy walks right up behind my truck. I'm started to move already. Never saw me. And here's another one here. Okay, I saw him coming in, but then he stops behind me. What the hell? Okay, I can see a little bit out of my side mirrors, but this lady decides she's going to walk behind me too. Okay, there you have it. You got to have vision to the back. And with my pickup, the canopy, and the tinted windows in the canopy, it's virtually impossible. So I'm off, and I'm safe, and I'm happy. Anyway, there's a number of settings on here. You can increase your brightness. You can uh, voice recording enabled. See, uh, enable the voice rec recording. If you don't want voice recording, voice recording disabled. You can disable it so there's no voice recording. In other words, you don't hear what's going on in the cab, or you can't hear what's going on outside. So that's good. And this home button up here shows you all your different. It's fairly straightforward, all of your uh, settings. It just takes a little getting used to. Now, this camera is set to shut off. You can set, have it set to shut off in 30 seconds, and I have a, or uh, 10 minutes. There's only two settings, and I've elected to have it in 10 minutes because if I'm driving and the camera shuts off after 10 minutes, that's fine. But when I, as soon as I go into a parking lot or I, I know I'm going to be backing up, I can hit this button and it brings the picture back up on the screen for 10 minutes and now I have access to my backup camera when I'm backing up. The 30 seconds one I didn't want to use because I didn't want the camera shutting off midway through a backup maneuver, if that makes sense. Okay, we're going to go to the back of the truck right now and I'll show you the uh, installation, how I did the backup camera. Okay, the backup camera is on right now. If you can see that little blue light there, it's, uh, it's very bright out here and I can't even tell with my screen here whether it's on or not. But the one mistake I made was that I thought, okay, I'll mount this on the frame of the canopy right here, inside frame, rather than have it move up and down with the glass. But having thought about it and used it a little bit, uh, I would rather have this camera mounted up on the glass from the standpoint that when you see it right now, the uh, as soon as I climb in the back of the truck, which I do to access things, I'm going to hit this with my back. Right? I mean, I'm going to do damage to it. And uh, so what I'm going to elect it to do is to move this camera up onto the glass of the canopy so that it will swing up out of the way when I'm in and out of the truck. Now, the only real thing I can find wrong with this setup is that these cameras, they have adjustment. You can rotate the camera up or down, but you can't rotate it side to side. There's no horizontal swivel on either the front or backup camera. 
so you you have to be very careful when you install the camera to have it's a two-person job you have to have someone watching the monitor and saying okay that's about right and then stick it on because once it's stuck on with the double face tape you can't adjust it and that's the only fault I can find with this system so we're gonna shut the camera off here and I'm gonna go ahead with moving the installation from the canopy up to the glass that 3M tape sticks really good <laughs> take a razor knife and trim it off and have to clean it off the bottom of the camera to uh, put on a new piece and luckily they give you enough of that 3M tape that you can screw up a few times and put it on. Now I've uh, cleaned off the glass, try and position this in the center get a good adhesion. Plug in the camera wire that runs to the front monitor and I'm going to clean up the wires later and tuck them up nice. Now we'll go test it. Now when the camera first starts up it comes up with an information screen telling you what it is you can get bypass that very quickly by just touching the on off button GPS connected. and it goes to the camera Continuous recording will now start now the camera just confirms that the GPS is connected and that the uh, camera is starting now we're looking in the front mode frontal camera so we'll go up here on our switches and switch it to the rear view mode. There we are. We've got the camera mounted on the glass canopy now so it swings up out of the way and adjusted it so we've got a good view towards the rear. And uh, you can see my wife's wheelchair ramp just right behind the truck. It's on my hitch and backwards towards the neighborhood. So very happy with that. The next stage, well, we're going to get uh, some road footage and we'll show you how uh, well the camera works actually recording. Now, Thinkware provides you with an uh, application where you can review your video footage and uh, we'll just go over that and show you some of the features. To me, it's one of the best I've ever seen for analyzing dashboard camera video. So, uh, up in the uh, top corner here, we have the current file that we're playing and the has the date and the time and it's hard to see and there's a little F at the back of it indicating the front camera. On this side we have the rear camera file number, date, time and R for indicating rear behind it. All these files are listed down below here in this uh, uh, list here. So you can pick any one, a rear or a forward. They're all one after each other. Boy, I tell you, I should have cleaned my windshield. I think that's uh, pretty bad. But that's a pretty good picture showing, uh, despite the fact we're going directly into the sun here. Now at the top, we can toggle the rear and the uh, front footage. This is our rear view uh, camera in this little box. Obviously the front camera. We can toggle those. There's my rear view. Okay. Or we can go back to the front view. So you can watch what's happening behind you or in front. And it's being recorded at all times. You have a full screen mode, and then you have a rear camera where you could shut that window off completely doesn't really bother you so I don't know why you would even have that but anyway we'll go down here and uh, these are your typical audio controls over here we have the uh, we're at the 22nd mark of this particular clip it shows your speed and your clip is on the uh, play line here 
So let's play this and show you. Here we're going to cross Okanagan Lake on the uh, W.R. Bennett Bridge. It's a partially floating bridge once we get over the, uh, the large span here. And they built that bridge not too long ago and increased the height of the span so the sailboats could get under. Used to have a lift bridge which would really play havoc with the traffic in the summertime. Okay, the camera, you can see these uh, little dots up on the top here of the, of the screen. Those are my, uh, uh, that's my canopy. Here we can toggle to our front camera again. We're halfway across the bridge. Then back again. Now these are recording all the time, front and rear. see in traffic all the uh, idiots flying by here like it's uh, the Dillon Raceway but believe me it's pretty good insurance to have a dash and backup camera in case you ever have an incident you have to contest here we're going back across the bridge and you can see that even though we're shooting right into the Sun the picture is pretty nice well, there you have. That's a quick little look at the at the video that the cameras take here, and uh, I'm very pleased with it. it. Does a great job. Now, here I'm going to show you a few incidents just to uh, see if you think you would uh, prefer to have a dash cam at this point or not. I'm just leaving home now, heading into town to do some shopping. I'll let you determine whether the dash cam would have been. Uh, helpful in these situations. You can hear my music playing because the uh, microphone is on in the cab. Now he never even saw me, he was on the phone. Oh, she thought she could make it. Well, no, she stopped in time at least. And here I'm approaching a traffic circle. I don't know whether people are familiar with traffic circles. We have them here. And if you're in the traffic circle, you are have the right-of-way. I'm yielding to the traffic here because they have the right-of-way. Now I'm going to pull into the traffic circle. And this lady decides, well, geez, I think I could make it. Well, those of you that have watched both my videos know I have these two systems in my truck and I'll try and tell you the benefits and the positives and the negatives that I, that I found by using them. We're going to look at the Thinkware system first and as you can see the screen is very small and that's a drawback to it. We're looking forward at my Quonset hut in front of the truck and I can flip it to a rear view and now we're looking at a rear view and you can see that the postage stamp image is showing the front view it takes up a good portion of the, uh, the actual screen so it makes it virtually useless as a backup camera plus the image is reversed this is my neighbor's motorhome it's actually over on this side and I phoned the company I said well most cameras they have a a setting where you can uh, reverse the mirror image and they said no it's uh, strictly a rear view camera and uh, it's not a backup camera so that prompted me to have to go and purchase my halo view system now this one was a hundred and seventy five dollars hundred seventy nine dollars plus I purchased an extra camera an extra wiring I think I came in at a little uh, a little over $250 and the Thinkware system was around 400 You can see how hard it is to see because my eyes and the camera are having an awful time seeing the screen when it's backlit by the, uh, the sky and the window. Okay, the Thinkware system that we're looking at right now 
as I say, makes a very poor backup camera, but is an excellent system, both rear and front, for taking video while you're driving. So as a security system to give you some uh, insurance and proving uh, what the actual situation is if you run into a, a motor vehicle situation, it's an excellent recording system. And I'll give it full marks on there. Backup camera, I'll give it a one out of 10. And uh, very expensive for what you get though. I could have gone to a higher grade system here on the Halo View that had the recording capabilities had I known that the ThinkView was strictly a video system and not a backup system. But the Halo View, this particular one here, I'm very happy with. It doesn't record, but it has the uh, front view and, or sorry, the rear view camera, which we're looking back. You can see my neighbor's motorhome here is on the proper side. Okay, I can see the entire cul-de-sac right around to the motorhome. Now if we go to the second camera, I have a second camera looking out the right side of my canopy. And there you can see my neighbor's motorhome once again. And all our fence, most of our fence line in the backyard. So there is no blind spot. There's the corner of the fence. You can see it to the right here. That's the corner of the fence. And we'll go to the second camera. And there's the corner of the fence again. So they're both on the right side. They're not a mirror image. And there is no blind spot. Okay, my final conclusion. Uh, if the Thinkware camera had a proper backup monitor that you could actually see, I would have loved to have just stayed with that. But I couldn't. So... If I was to do it all over again, I was to start from scratch. Uh, I mean, I've got a lot of money invested here now, so I can't scrap them. But if I was to do it again from scratch, I would have gone with the Halo View with the bigger monitor and all the features being able to reverse the mirror image and two cameras like I have and with a recording capability. That's all. So that would be it. If I were you, I would buy something like the Halo View that records, and if you want multi-cameras, have it so that it functions with multi-cameras, and uh, also gives you the opportunity, like I say, to be able to record what you're looking at. And that's my, my thoughts. Okay, thanks for watching. I've um, been a little long-winded in this. A uh, Subscribe. Yeah, I've got many other videos. I'll put a link in the description for the other video uh, if it's the Halo View or the Thinkware Versa Vice then you can uh, go and look at the different uh, installations and some of the features of them. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.